Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is the first time I think I filmed two days in a row. Um, because I'm in quarantine, I have literally nothing to do. So I figured I could put together another video and talk about a series that I am really, really excited about right now. I've got my little buddy down here. She's going to be helping me with this review, aren't you? She's so happy that I'm home <laughs> every single day right now. So I will be going to back to work next week. And then I might, depending on how the pandemic uh, goes, I might be having the next week off after that. So um, I will be uploading a lot more on the weeks that I am off, um, but I am still planning on vlogging for the um, Owls Readathon. I began my first book this morning. So without further ado, I want to show you guys my favorite series ever, and that is the Ark of the Scythe series by Neil Schusterman. And I actually began reading this series in December when I had surgery immediately read the second book and then because of some personal things that happened I uh, a couple months ago I picked up the third book because I wanted something very comforting and I'm so glad that I did I finished it last night I couldn't stop talking about it I had troubles going to sleep because I was thinking about it so much so I wanted to come on here and do a full series review because I am so excited about this series and I just want everybody to read it so a quick little premise I don't want to go into too many details because this world is so massive that it just needs to be explored for yourself um, this world is very unique and just absolutely outstandingly um, panned out throughout the three books in the series. So we're following two main characters, Rowan and Citra, and they are becoming apprentices to be scythes. So scythes in this world are people that control the population because we are currently in a world that is our society today. So scythes are here to control the population because we are in a world that has conquered all disease, it can revive people from the dead. So the only thing that plagues the world that we are reading about is overpopulation. And so the only way to control that is by having a governing system that controls the population for them, which are the scythedom. And so they go around and the scythedom has its own set of commandments and rules to make sure that there's no biases when it comes to killing. So. One thing that they do um, address is uh, racial bias. Killing one race more than the other, they will get put on like a probationary period where the sightum chooses the victims for uh, them. And so it's very embarrassing for the scythe to not have their own control over that. And so that's kind of how they keep that racial bias in check. So... I wanted to go through some of the main points of the series and why I think every single person, whether you love sci-fi, whether you love YA, why you should read this series. So the first thing I wanna talk about is uh, characters. And I think the way that these characters are built is absolutely phenomenal. I have never felt more connected to a couple of uh, characters, that being Rowan and Citra, than I have Maybe in maybe the Stormlight Archive, um, and the Stormlight Archive is three thousand plus pages at this point. This series is probably only about, I would say, maybe twelve hundred pages between the three books. And the way that Neil Schusterman really built them up to make you care about them within the first book is phenomenal. Um, the one thing that I want to mention is there is a lot of characters, and. Neil Schusterman does bring up a lot of characters to make like a convenient plot uh, point happen every once in a while. And it comes up more in the later books than it does in the earlier ones. So it's, that's one thing to keep in mind is there were a couple times where I had to go back and try to figure out where I'd heard of this character before because I was like, this person was just barely mentioned in the first book, which was a long time ago. So um, I think that could have been done a little bit better. I am also not a fan of tons and tons and tons of characters. Um, I really don't ever think that I should be reading about a character and being like, I have no idea who this is. I think that that's just poor execution on the author's point. So that's, that's really my only criticism that I have for this entire series is sometimes the characters are just a convenient plot 
point for the story. Other than that, the characters that are fleshed out, that being Citra, Rowan, uh, Scythe Faraday, um, and some other ones later on in the series that I don't want to bring up um, quite yet. <laughs> um, those characters are fully fleshed out and you really, really care about these characters because it just the stakes are so high and being a scythe you just really feel for the things that these people have to go through on a daily basis because their job is just to kill people and so they all they're trained to keep their conscious in check and they're trained to keep their feelings in mourning and but they still have to understand that like this is part of the job we still have to we can grieve every single person we kill but we still have to do it it doesn't make it right to just stop so um for the characters I would give that really a three out of five if I were to give it a score just because yeah there's some characters in there that just aren't fully fleshed out so the second thing I want to talk about is plot and I think the plot in this book is five out of five could not be better and I think a lot of this is because Neil Shusterman is a very very seasoned author he has published like I would say like 30 novels at this point. And so the guy really knows how to make an outline. He knows how to make a trilogy and it really shows in this series. This series gets better and better with every single book. It does not suffer from middle book syndrome. There are things that happen in the second book that are just as exciting as the first book, just exciting as the finale. So I would I would say if you are a plot driven reader, this is a series that you have to pick up because I haven't read a series that has done it better than this one. The stakes start off extremely high from the beginning. There is a villain in the series that just gets more evil and more evil and more evil. There's so many things that makes this guy evil that mimics our society today because this guy is in power and he's in his right to do everything that he does and you can see him kind of flip the narrative to work in his favor whenever he does something so evil he justifies it and it just makes him so realistically scary that there were so many times my mouth was on the ground i'm like i can't believe that just happened so the next thing i want to talk about is neil schusterman's writing style and one thing that makes this series so accessible to so many people is the writing style. It reads a lot like a YA book and I, I believe this is categorized as a YA series but the themes that we that we encounter, the um, plot that we encounter rivals some of the best adult fiction that I have read and because it is written in a YA format it makes the series so easy to just fly through and that was one of the biggest things that I loved about it was because the, since the writing style was so accessible for me, I could read it when I was really tired at night. I could read it first thing in the morning. I could just read a chapter and, you know, it was good. It wasn't, it didn't feel like a chore to read. And sometimes when I'm reading some of these bigger series back here, like the Stormlight Archive, The Name of the Wind, I feel like that's kind of a chore because you're kind of keeping up with all these moving parts. And this book has all those same moving parts where you're following three different big entities, you're following a lot of characters, but it does it in such an easy to read way that I think everybody would enjoy it, whether you like reading more young adult and you're trying to transition to adult, or if you're an adult, mainly adult fiction reader, and you want to read something a little bit more relaxing and not so complex. So I give five out of five stars for the writing style. It was so easy to read. It just, oh, it makes me so happy. <laughs> so another thing that I wanted to bring up when uh, come to writing style is the way that Neil Schusterman formats his books. So in the beginning, uh, the first book, he kind of switches it up later on. But in between each chapter, we get these little um <laughs> what one of my favorite podcast calls are snapters but the little snapshots in between chapters you kind of get the inner thoughts of the major characters and so you're kind of getting some dimension and world building from uh the snapters um throughout the book and with the second book the thunderhead we're getting thoughts from the thunder and so in the third book he does mix it up quite a bit there's a couple different um techniques that he kind of plays with and 
it all works out amazingly. He just does such an amazing job with taking these little couple paragraphs. Um, it's usually one to three paragraphs in between each chapter and it just creates a bigger world and he does such a masterful job with this um, writing style that I, I've never seen in another book. Um, maybe the Stormlight Archive but I think that Neil Schusterman actually did a little bit better so sorry Brandon. So the next thing I want to talk about is the themes that we explore in this book and the themes are very 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 important and very very dark. Since we are in a utopian society there is a lot of good that's happening in the world. The world has found um, you know world peace, there's no crime, there everyone gets to work the jobs that they want to work. So they don't have to work if they don't want to because everybody just gets their money, everyone can afford housing, it's just such a perfect peaceful world. And but on the other hand, there's a lot of downsides to this world that we really need to look at in our society today. So one of the things that is explored that really stood out to me in book two is the Thunderhead is talking about the scythe quota. So that each scythe has to kill, I believe, five people per week to keep up their quota. And I believe there's like 20,000, 30,000 scythes or something across the world. So that many people are dying each week. And the or the Thunderhead starts to talk about how that's not enough. That's not enough to keep up with the population right now. And he he justifies why he's not intervening yet. Because he's like, I'm not going to intervene with the Scythedom. They do what they need to do. You know, I don't want the people to worry. Because once these people start worrying, then we're going to start seeing mass um, chaos happen in the world. But he says in the next hundred years... Each scythe, we, in order to keep the population under control, we need to up it to like 200 people a week per scythe. And we need to add like 100,000 more scythes because the population is just going crazy. And so he was like, within the next 100 years, we're going to have to adjust to that. And I thought that was such an interesting point to bring up that our society today, in order to cope with some of uh, you know the worry of overpopulation and reaching the point where we no longer can have enough resources for the amount of people in this world it's going to happen eventually because our population keeps growing and you know this is going to happen eventually but i don't feel like people actively fear it because it's such a scary thing to think about that we just keep putting it off to the to the future. And I think it's something that, you know, we need to consider. And there's been countries that have put things in place where they say, you know, you can only have one um, daughter or something. I believe that was what China did for years. And there's been things put into place, but then you kind of are like, when does it infract all my freedom as a human being, you know, but this is a totally valid thing. We're also really exploring death. Um, death is the main theme of this entire series and uh, different sides look at death different ways. So one of the main sides that we follow, I don't want to say who, but they have decided to allow they're, I don't want to say victims, but the people that they are killing to choose the way that they want to die because they want uh, that person to have that option. So they don't have the option to choose if they're going to die or not, but they do have the option to say, hey, I want to die by falling out of a plane. I want to die around my family, you know, and the people that I love and whatever. That scythe gets a lot of respect from the community because that has never been done before. There's some sides that only choose to kill using a very fast acting poison so the people don't suffer. There's some people that just switch it up every single day. There's some people that choose to do it in a crowd, you know, and so there's so many different ways that even the sides choose to uh, control the population. So there's so many deep, deep themes that you can look, you can look into the series in a very deep and philosophical way, or you can just skim the surface, whichever way you prefer. Stepping away from being, you know, my typical analytical reader that I am, I want to just talk about my overall enjoyment of the series. And like I've said many times in this video is this is my favorite series of all time. I had a 
blast reading the series and even without um, all of the deep philosophical themes that we see in this book this book is just a fun time there are so many things that I was reading and I was like man Neil Schusterman is one creative guy he really just created this entire world that a world that I would love to live in and he didn't have to go there but he did and he did that for us <laughs> he's just I I'm blown away by the plot I'm blown away by the characters I'm blown away by the themes I'm I can't I can't tell you guys enough how much I love this series and I really really hope that this video inspires you to pick up the series because I just think more people need to experience it. I think that this is a must read for anybody, especially if you like sci-fi or fantasy or if you're a young adult reader. I think it's accessible to multiple people. I think a lot of people would just thoroughly enjoy it, even if you just read the first book. I mean, that in itself is just an amazing title. So it just is an added bonus that we get two more books on top of it. And <laughs> I could honestly see Neil Schusterman writing like a novella following the events of what happened at the very end. I could definitely see that happening as well. But um, please leave a comment down below if you have read this series. I would love to know what you guys think. You know, if you like these types of reviews, I plan on doing some more reviews in the future following the same format where we talk about characters, we talk about plot, we talk about themes, we talk about writing style, all those things. Please let me know what you thought about this and if this was helpful to you at all. So. It would be great if you subscribe to my channel. It helps me out so much. I am so excited to start vlogging for the Owls Readathon because that is starting up today. So good luck to everybody doing the readathon and I will see you in my next video.